Hello chemistry students. Today we are going to learn how to calculate the number of valence electrons in every element. Last time I gave you this cheat sheet here on the right hand side of the screen. If you don't already have this copied in your notes, please pause this video and copy it down now. Each of these, as you learned, are electron orbitals or places where electrons can exist and each of them have different energy levels. A scientist by the name of Aufbau came up with the Aufbau principle and in that principle he said that orbitals are filled in order of increasing energy starting with the lowest energy and he drew this diagram that you see on the left. It's another way of representing where electrons exist, but notice that they have the same titles. Each of these little boxes have the same titles as the diagram that I gave you last time. Building off of Aufbau's idea, a scientist by the name of Pauli came up with the Pauli exclusion principle. In this principle, he said, an atomic orbital may contain no more than two electrons. We talked about that part last time. For example, either one or two electrons can occupy an s orbital or a p orbital. Two electrons in the same orbital must have opposite spins. Spin is a quantum mechanical property of electrons. Think about spin as clockwise or counterclockwise. So we are going to re represent opposite spins by arrows that point either up or down. When you are filling in electrons in these orbitals represented by boxes, what you're going to do is each electron is an arrow. So for helium, helium is an element that has two electrons, you would just write an arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing down. The arrow pointing up represents a clockwise spin and the arrow pointing down represents a counterclockwise spin. Hund's rule states that electrons occupy orbitals of the same energy in a way that maximizes the number of electrons with that same spin direction. That's kind of a wordy rule, but I sort of like to explain it like you're talking about people sitting on a bus. If the 2p orbital is being filled, you can think of each of these orbitals as a seat on the bus. If nobody knows each other on the bus, they are going to fill by each person taking their own seat. And then once that all the seats have one person in them, the electrons will actually come in and share the seats. Does that make sense? So a good example for this one is phosphorus. Phosphorus has 15 electrons. I just watch how I fill them in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so now that you understand electron configuration so well, we can start to talk about valence electrons. Valence electrons are the electrons in the highest occupied energy level or the highest main level of an element's atoms. And something to note is any electrons that end up in the d orbitals do not count, or f for that matter, do not count towards the valence electrons because if there are electrons that end up in the 3d orbital. Before they go into the 3d orbital, 
there are actually two electrons that are in the 4s. And you can see that the 4s is a higher main level than 3d. So the valence electrons are here. And these ones end up not counting towards the valence electrons. Let's do an example. If we were going to calculate the number of valence electrons in let's do carbon. Carbon has six electrons. So the first thing you have to do is just fill in the boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then figure out what the highest occupied main level is. In this case, it's level two. And then add up every electron that's in level two. So that's one, two, three, four. So carbon has four valence electrons. Let's practice. Starting with hydrogen, easy. It only has one electron, so we put one in. The electron configuration is 1s1. And the number of valence electrons, because the highest occupied energy level is one, there is one valence electron. Carbon. Let's put in our six electrons. One, two, three, four. And then we're going to maximize the spin in the p orbitals. Five, six. The highest main level is level two. And there are four electrons in that level, so there are four valence electrons. The electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Neon has eight electrons total. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, that's not neon. That's nitrogen. Uh, no, no, yeah, nitrogen has eight. Neon actually has ten. That's my mistake, sorry. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so the electron configuration of neon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. The highest main level that's filled is level 2 again. And there are 8 electrons in that level. Magnesium has 12 electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Here's our configuration. The highest main level is level three this time. And there are two electrons in that level, so there are two valence electrons. Silicon 
That's 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Here's our configuration. Main level three is the largest occupied. And there are four electrons in that main level, meaning that silicon has four valence electrons. And finally, we have chlorine with 17 electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Here's our configuration. Our highest occupied energy level is level 3. and it has seven electrons in it, so chlorine has seven valence electrons.